Well, let's get some reaction uh, from John Brennan's visit now from a former MI5 agent, Annie Mashon. She's joining us, joining us live from Berlin. Hi there, Annie. What do you make of this? Was there a connection? His visit just a couple of days before we're seeing this crackdown. It's very interesting timing, it has to be said. The heads of major Western intelligence agencies tend to have their diaries fairly well locked down for months in advance. So for him to suddenly have made this, this trip shows that either they are very keen to solidify, to cement uh, certain working relationships with their new allies, or they see that things are spinning out of control and they're trying to regain that control. Mm. So if you're going to put money um, on it, what would it be? it's very interesting timing for him to break that. Probably trying to regain control. Um, I mean, there's no secret about the fact that State Department official Victoria Newland boasted that over, you know, since the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, America has pumped in about five billion dollars into the Ukraine to try and um, peddle influence in that country. So I don't think there's any doubt that uh, Washington has been meddling with the internal politics of the Ukraine and continues to do so. But I think that this time they have miscalculated the wishes of the Ukrainian people. Well, now Kiev's deployed the full force uh, of its uh, military might, or starting to at least on the protesters in the east and um, we're already starting to hear of casualties we're maybe also hearing of fatalities if this continues if it kicks off even more what's Washington going to do then what's Washington going to do is it going to stand by I think it's going to bottle it I think that it wants to make a loud noise and try and intimidate people but I can't see that they have the power or the will really to intervene at this point uh, as we saw as well with um, their misadventures across the Middle East and North Africa over the last few years, they've had their, their nose blooded a little bit. And um, we saw them back down over Syria, where they tried to back certain insurgency groups there, who then turned out to be the people that they were condemning as potential terrorists. So they had to back down, um, as well as in the face of the UN activity of, of China and Russia. I think um, in Ukraine they're going to have to do the same thing. They miscalculated on the level of support that they would receive. They miscalculated on the, the wishes of the people. It's a bit like when, they, when they, they tried to claim that the Crimea referendum was illegitimate. I mean, this was 95, 97 percent of the people saying... Yeah, people going into polling booths, ticking, yep, and yet, ticking sheets. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Quickly. Um, and they're trying to bring democracy to the wider world. And, you know, they condemn it when other peoples want their own democracy. And, and what about these claims we're hearing time and again from Kiev and, and its Western allies that it's Russia that's stoking all this up, Russia's firmly behind it. Russia's saying, well, show us the proof. Sergei Lavrov said yesterday, if you <laughs> arrested people that side that are, are Russian agents, that are Russian army people, bring them out, show them to us. Why isn't that happening? Well, give us the proof, yes. Um, neither side, I'm sure, is, has perfectly clean hands in this. But as I said, Victoria Newland, the State Department official, has boasted that the US has pumped $5 billion into trying to destabilize or trying to influence and peddle their influence within the Ukraine since the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, of course, this is power politics. Of course, major powers will all do this. But uh, the US has been caught with its pants down this time. Mm. Um, are we seeing some sort of default Cold War style era brinkmanship going on here now? Is it really going to come to that? Surely not. Hopefully not. What do you think? I wouldn't have thought so, no. I think um, the US is still has sort of this sort of old fashioned, um, you know, over the last 20 years, imperialist, uh, but victorious. It, but it wants sort to of beef ambitions. up its military presence but on the border of Russia. Russia is That's the worry, back. isn't it? Well, it is, yes, and it's understandable. I mean, it's like history starts when the Western media decides it starts. So they ignore the <laughs> fact that um, this provocation has been building across these, this region, particularly in the Ukraine over the last few years, stoked by the US. Um, and then they only start reporting about the fact that you know, it's anti-democratic when Russia tries to protect Russian-speaking peoples. I'm not an apologist for either side, but it, it strikes me as hypocritical that on the one hand, the US can um, intervene on humanitarian interventions and bomb, bomb countries across the North Africa and the Middle East and including Yugoslavia, of course, in the late 1990s. And that's seen as OK. Whereas when Russia tries to intervene and do the same sort of thing, that's seen as bad. You it's seem the to be what you're saying is uh, common sense, in fact. OK, Annie Mashon, nice to see you. Thanks ever so much for being with us tonight and being live on RT International.